The failure question. I sold Mint for $170 million when I was 28 years old. It sounds quite fairy tale, and it was two years after we launched. It all seems very glamorous, but it's only because I failed a bunch of times both before and frankly after that. After Mint, I was on a bit of a, a high, probably too full of myself, and I thought, well, what's the most ambitious thing that I can, I can try to tackle? All of humanity's problems. And I thought, well, can I develop a new form of transportation, not cars or even self-driving cars, but a system that used magnetic levitation, of all things? The maglev works. That actually wasn't even the, the, the problem. The real problem is, as you might guess, it's just way too darned expensive, which is obvious to anyone who's just heard that story. But I had to prove it to myself, and so I did the calculations of what would all the materials cost. I was uh, full of myself in terms of my, my ambition there, but I stopped once I proved that economically it couldn't work, at least with the population densities that we have in the U.S. That was a big failure and uh, a year of my uh, life. And then I bought my first house and the problems that just naturally arose from that led me to starting Fountain, which I think is just a much more organic way to start a business, to solve your own problems rather than look for a problem to solve. The two are seem subtly different but are dramatically different in the consequences that they bring.